All right, I'm going to initiate a forced regen on this 2020 Freightliner M2 Gretsch GM40. Drop it back to low idle. Neutral. Parking brakes on. I got my scan tool here. It's already on the regen screen. So all I got to do is press OK. Hot exhaust light turns on. And now I can monitor the different parameters. So right now it says it's not dosing. That's because it has not met the conditions required to dose. What that means is uh, there is a seventh injector that injects diesel fuel into the exhaust stream to uh, like just north of the diesel oxidation catalyst to generate heat and get the DPF hot to burn the soot. So then you have these temperatures. You have diesel oxidation catalyst, which usually that warms up to about 300 degrees, 350 degrees. Sometimes it'll cool down to 300 degrees or so in, within that range. That's perfectly normal. The important part is that these two get up to about 575 degrees Celsius, which is over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. So usually this one climbs first, then this one, then this one. So this is your DPF inlet, DPF outlet, and then we scroll down. There is also one that tells you how much soot is in your filter. Right now there is not a lot of soot at all, but I'm just doing this uh, regen as a preventative maintenance thing. And there's also your uh, differential pressure, which right now, since it's not up to temp, it's pretty low, but it'll climb up to about hmm, 0 0.78, 0 0.81, maybe even 0.87. That's the normal range when it's up to temp. But the most important values to watch are the ones I showed earlier, those temps. right here is when the DOC gets up to temp that's when the uh, after treatment injector is going to start to dose that diesel fuel and since this has a Cummins B6.7 whenever the regen is in progress this lights going to be on the only exception to that is when you're driving above six miles per hour it'll come back on when you slow down to that speed all right, it just now started to dose, so the temps below should start climbing up. And since this bus has a jake brake, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but uh, the exhaust note will change because that jake brake's gonna kick on and help build heat. So that DPF inlet should start climbing sky high now that it's dosing. And I've timed this, uh, full forced regen takes about an hour and 15 minutes, unless of course you abort it sooner than that. And it uh, will fast idle about 1050 RPMs. That is perfectly normal. That is required for the regen process because it has to work hard to get hot and it's not going to work hard if it's just slow idling. Now if it's doing a passive regen, say you were driving and it uh, went into one automatically, then it will continue to regen at idle, however only for a limited time. It all, it all depends on uh, when you start driving again because there is a timer for inactivity where it will stop regening if you um, have the bus parked in idling for a few minutes. And then it'll start back up when you um, start to drive above that required speed again, which on this bus it's set to five miles per hour. On the newer buses we have, 
it's not programmed right and you have to go at least 40 miles an hour to initiate a passive regen while driving. Not only that, but when you slow down below 5 miles an hour, it uh, stops the regen. Which I don't know why it does that. You know, like I said, it was programmed wrong from the factory. I talked to my friend, that one LT1, who works for Thomas Built Buses, which is also owned by Freightliner, and he says it's a safety feature, I guess, to protect the SCR system, because uh, when it's regenning and it's at slow idle, it's supposedly not good for the SCR, and so his advice is to either save it for the highway or for when you're parked and you need to do a forced regen, so... To answer your question, you might have, no, doing a forced regen when the DPF light's not on is not going to hurt it. But uh, yeah, the temps are slowly starting to climb, and there is also a menu that tells you the target temperature for the uh, regen, and that goes up to 575. It gradually starts low and then gets higher as the regen procedure continues. But yeah, you can see the diesel oxidation catalyst has gotten up to temp. And so that will allow the DPF to get up to temp and then the DOC starts cooling down a little bit. But obviously the whole system is still very hot as it's going to get over a thousand degrees. But this is what you got to look for when you're doing a regen is these temperatures so that way you know it's doing a proper regen and it's not going to stop or throw a check engine light because if it's not going to get up to temp or if there's something preventing that seventh injector from dosing then it will abort the regen and why because if that doser does not enable it's not going to get up to temp and burn that soot that's just how it is so um Hope you guys enjoyed this um, short explanation of what to look for when doing a forced regen. Um, I hope you enjoyed. This bus actually runs pretty clean, so it doesn't accumulate a whole lot of soot in the DPF. But one other thing I will point out is that every 24 hours or so of engine running time, will trigger an automatic passive regen the next time you get above that required driving speed that it's set to. Regardless of how much soot is in the system, it's just to uh, make sure the system's clean because sometimes you might also get def deposits in your SCR catalyst, so a regen not only cleans your DPF, but also liquefies any frozen def fluid or, or crystallized death fluid, I should say, that is caking up in your SCR system. Obviously, if you've got excessive death deposits, you got another problem at hand. You might have to replace your death doser. But uh, the regen every 24 hours passively is a good system to have in place because it is preventative and it reduces the need for forced regens. But obviously, you still want to do a forced regen and properly burn everything out at least once a month or so so that way you're keeping your emission system clean and healthy because these things are not cheap they're about eight thousand dollars roughly for Cummins because it's a single unit after treatment system you can't just replace the uh, DOC or DPF or SCR catalyst alone if one of them goes all three of them go for the most part I think the DOC can be, or the DPF can be changed without having to change the uh, whole after treatment system, but that's about it. Because they're making these things harder and harder to um, do significantly less expensive repairs on. Because obviously, you know, the, the single unit after treatment system, like I've said, is significantly more expensive than just replacing one component, such as the DPF. But yeah, you can see we're cooking now.
one thing I'll note is if you abort the regen and it hasn't gotten up to temp, this light's going to go out immediately. If you abort it and it has gotten up to temp and it's been at least 15 minutes or so while you've been doing it, the light will stay on about three to five minutes just to indicate the temperatures are still elevated. All right, that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this explanation.